So let's take a look at this. If you take some aluminum and you react it with copper to chloride, which is this really neat um, green substance, but it, when you dissolve it, it turns that beautiful blue that dissolved copper is, you actually get pure copper forming, these little brown flaky clusters, and the aluminum totally dissociates. So the, the aluminum is actually a piece of tin foil, and it'll actually totally react out and you'll wind up with aluminum chloride in solution. And so we can look at the uh, chemical formulas, and um, I'm assuming you know how to do that. So aluminum is Al, copper to chloride is CuCl2, copper is Cu, and aluminum chloride is AlCl3. Now, unlike the other two reactions we looked at in the previous videos, this reaction is a little bit more complicated, and that has to do with the fact that copper and aluminum are both changing charges and uh, going in all kinds of directions in this wonderful number three that we're dealing with. But we'll start with our reactants, which is the way that all reactions start, of course, and that goes without saying. So I'm going to grab an aluminum atom here, and I'm going to grab a copper ion there, and we'll keep that copper the same color, even though in the reaction it changes color. We're going to need two chlorides to make copper chloride. Now, these are the units. So we have aluminum atom and formula unit of copper to chloride. Now, let's just pretend that I gave you, as your teacher, a bunch of tin foil and a bunch of copper chloride. And I said, dissolve the copper chloride, and we're going to react these things together. And let's just pretend as your teacher, I had pre-measured out for you, and we'll use our stoichiometry here, seven moles of each. And you're like, why do you gotta bring in the mole stuff? Because this is the real chemistry as opposed to the mathistry. Now, check it out. Whoa, you stay down there where you belong. Okay, so we have seven moles of aluminum. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. We have seven moles of copper chloride. I'm not going to count these guys out because they're kind of crazy. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven moles of copper to chloride. Now, with the ghosting method, well, the ghost is uh, kind of a phantom of what was once there but is there no longer, kind of hinting at what was there before but it isn't fully there. And so we can actually use this method in our chemistry and it'll actually show the balanced chemical equation. But there's one rule that you've got, well, that's actually two, but it's kind of the same deal. So if you start using a reactant that's a compound, you have to finish that compound off. If you start building a product, you have to completely build that product, an entire unit of that. And I'll show you what I mean in a second. Okay, so let's take a look. Our first product is copper. So this copper winds up going from being an ion to an atom. So now we're going to look at our copper ghost. Spook. And there it is there. So that hints at the copper that was there before, but got used to make the solid copper in the products. Now we need to make aluminum chloride. So we need to move an aluminum atom over here, which leaves a ghost of aluminum behind. And as I said before, we have to finish reacting this off and finish building this one. So these two chlorides are gonna go to the first unit of aluminum chloride, but obviously it's not finished. And there's your copper chloride ghost completely. So now you've got a better picture. And I say, well, how many have been used up and how many are remaining? We have an actual sense of that. And that's what's going to lead you into the same sort of math process. Now, obviously we need to finish building this aluminum chloride. And since this one's starting to be used, I have to finish it off. That means that one's going to go there, and we need a ghost for where it was. And this copper is going to go there, and we need a ghost for where it was. So let me grab that one, go back up to the metals here. And there it is there. All right, now we've started building an aluminum chloride unit. We have to finish building an aluminum chloride unit. So that means I need 
one, two more of these, which means that I need one, two more ghosts of chloride over here, and I have to finish that off. So this copper is going over here. Oh, sorry, before that happens. This is all kind of happening at the same time, by the way. The aluminum goes here, and we need an aluminum ghost, and that would be here. And so this aluminum ghost and that copper has to be finished off of there. And you can see then that we've got ourselves two atoms of aluminum react with three units of copper to chloride to form three atoms of copper and two units of aluminum chloride. Now, we look at this and say, well, which one's the limiting reactant? Which one's the one that's gonna run out first? Clearly the copper two chloride is gonna run out first. We only have four moles of it? Hmm, I don't know. Let's take a look. Let's continue to build and see where we end up. I gotta keep building. That's gotta go there. Oops, that's the wrong one. Gotta get the right ghost in there. Okay. And so, where are we at now? about this method is if you lose track of it you can pause and take a look okay so we got to finish making this one and so our chlorides are done with those units which means this copper has got to go over here And we need two more aluminum atoms over here. In which case, of course, we need two more aluminum atom ghosts. So, interestingly, we can see then that in fact it's the copper two chloride that runs out first that we don't have enough of. And we would need more copper two chloride to react off that aluminum. And you'd have to bounce it off. And then aluminum would run out as we need to have that 2 to 3 to 3 to 2 ratio perfectly. And in this method, you can actually see that reactants were used up and products were formed. And so you'll never get the mistake of actually having you know, too many of these particles or not getting the understanding that what you started with is what you ended up with. And this helps you later on when you're asked questions of, you know, how many grams of each would remain. So if you wanted to figure out how many grams, if these were all moles, then you'd have three moles of aluminum, which would be three times 26 or 27, as it were, if we round it off. And we look at copper two chloride, and I think it's about 135-ish for one of those units, and that's how many grams would be left there. And we can look at how many grams of each we would need. Now, these have hugely, um, practical ramifications, especially in industry, when companies are calculating how much of each reactant they need. They don't want to buy too much, so they want to buy exactly how much they need, and that's where a, a real application can happen. I used to work in a soap factory, and somebody accidentally added an extra zero, and 10 trucks of a certain reactant showed up instead of one. So having your coefficients, having your numbers um, uh, lined up and locked in properly is critical, not just in chemistry, but also in the real world. I hope this method uh, helps you understand what's really going on. It is a little more time consuming and complicated, but it does give a truer sense of what's going on. I do encourage you to use whichever method works, but please keep in mind that this is chemistry, not mathistry, and this method gives us a clear understanding of what's actually going on.